at this juncture, I'm going to use a lot of scriptures. So I would want somebody or some people who are ready to open the Bible as I am going to be speaking to you uh, so that they can uh, read the Bible whenever I need somebody to read for me. Uh, I'm going to read by myself the first two scriptures that I'm going to be into. But as we move on, I would want some people who are ready to help me uh, in this teaching uh, to uh, read the Bible for me as we move on in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Are you ready to learn? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. We are going to be in Matthew chapter number 4 and verse 19. Matthew chapter number 4 and verse 19. The Bible from verse 19 says, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Can you please turn with me uh, to the book of uh, John chapter number 3. I wanted to read from verse 13 to 18, but however, for us to really understand uh, what is happening here, I'm going to read from verse 1. John chapter number 3. From verse number 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher came from heaven, from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canest not tell whence it came, cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a minister of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you the heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that cometh down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
that whosoever believeth, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, he that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. I presume that uh, wherever I was repeating, you understand that I wanted you to see the emphasis that I am putting on uh, those words. And maybe if you have got your own Bible, maybe you could under, underline uh, those words because they are very, very important uh, in our discussion today. Uh, may the good Lord continue to bless the reading of his word and also the reader in Jesus' might and wonderful name. Today, uh, I'm going to speak to you on the title, Testimony After Disappointment. Testimony After Disappointment. Uh, sometimes, uh, disappointments precedes a great testimony. Disappointments precedes a great testimony. Sometimes frustration and uh, disappointments, they come into our lives as a try time of trial to make sure that we do not soldier on. But I want to encourage somebody today that whatever is happening to you, whatever you are going through, whatever you are seeing in this life, it is going to be over. Nothing is permanent in this world. Nothing lives forever in this world. What is permanent is only the word of God which is permanent in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. So let me uh, say to you today, uh, when Jesus was talking to the disciples or was talking to uh, Peter, James, and John, when he said to them, follow me, uh, they did not just leave everything that they were doing and follow Jesus uh, without uh, understanding what was involved. I believe that when Jesus spoke to them, uh, we can read the words that Jesus spoke to them, but we do not understand what actually they had to under, understood that time. The Bible says, uh, these disciples, when they were called by Jesus, they were fishing. After toiling the whole night without catching anything, the Bible says, Jesus came in the morning and he said to them, uh, launch into the deep for a catch. Then they said to them, Master, we have toiled all night. However, at your word, we are going to do it. So they had to launch into the deep and they had to catch a lot of fish that they could not uh, that to the extent of that their boats were sinking because of the fish. The Bible says then Jesus said to them now follow me then I will make you into fishers of men. Sometimes when you are facing some challenges, some difficulties some tough times when somebody says follow me you are ready to leave whatever you are doing because it's not working. But if you have caught a lot of fish and somebody is saying, leave everything and follow me, then I will make you 
begin to doubt, how can this be? Where do you want me to go? Living this successful life. Sometimes the calling of God does not come when you are in a difficult moment. They come when everything else is okay. When life is blooming. When everything, when you are enjoying everything. But when Jesus said to the disciples, follow me. He knew that they wanted to deal with their fish. But however, he wanted them right there and right that time. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, Simon and all the other disciples, they did understand what Jesus was talking about. They did not have time to sell their fish. They did not have time to organize their families. But they had to say, everything we are living here, and we are following this man. Which means, when they heard, they there was an understanding that was bestowed into them which was deeper than what we read. So sometimes when we are speaking to you like this, you don't have to take things at first value, but you have to seek a deeper meaning, a deeper, to have a deeper understanding of what the Lord meant when he is saying these things. So there are about seven things that I want to talk to, 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 talk to you about. Seven things. Number one is about hearing. Hearing. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of God. So whenever you hear the word of God, you need to seek a deeper understanding of what the Lord wants you to do or what the Lord is saying to you. A lot of people would, to, would miss some opportunities because they fail to understand what the Spirit is saying. The Bible says, let them that are in spirit hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Simply because those who are in the flesh cannot hear and cannot understand what the Spirit is saying whenever the Spirit is speaking. So these disciples understood what the Lord was saying. And they did understand what needed to be done. So they did not remain where they were. But they said, we are going to leave everything and follow this man. Praise the name of the Lord. We have read a story of a man, a very common story, about a man called Nicodemus. The Bible says, he went to Jesus by night. Okay, okay. Let, let, let's rewind a little bit. Before he went to Jesus, I understand that he heard something about Jesus. Or he heard him speaking. So, going to Jesus, he was moved by what he heard and what he saw. The things that he heard and what he saw moved him to decide to say, I am going to visit this man. I want to understand something deeper. I want him to speak to me personally. Sometimes for you to seek things that are deeper, it means that there is something that you have understood to a certain level. This is why always when I teach, I always ask people to ask questions. When people ask questions, I know that there is something that they have understood. But if they don't ask questions, Sometimes you wonder if they have understood anything at all. So, this man decided to go to Jesus. Why? Because he had heard something. And he had seen something. So, he decided to go and visit Jesus. Then, when he got to Jesus, he said, Master, I know that Jehovah is with you. Because there is no one who can do the things that you are doing if the Lord is not with him. Then Jesus, who knew all people and knows everything, he had to address the need that was in Nicodemus' life. He said to him, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the 
the kingdom of God. Unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then Nicodemus was taken aback and said, but master, how can a man be born again when he is old? Can he go back into the mother's womb and be born again? Then Jesus said to him, what was born of flesh is flesh. And what is born of the spirit is spirit. I tell you the truth, if you are not born of water and of the spirit, you cannot enter. The first time he said, you cannot see. This time around he said, you cannot enter. Unless you are born of water and of the spirit, you cannot enter. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So Jesus here is saying, he is not only talking about the uh, ritual outside uh, thing that we do and we image people into the water. But he is also talking about something that is deeper. He is talking about the transformation of people. Because you cannot go into heaven because you have been dipped into water only. But if there is a transformation in your life, then you can enter into the kingdom of God. You cannot enter the kingdom of God if there is no transformation in your life. Your life has to be transformed. What you used to be, that's not what you are. You are now. The real miracle, the things that I used to do, I do them no more. The words that I used to say, I say them no more. Because there has been a transformation of life. Do I have a witness in the house? Amen. So, Nicodemus did not actually understand it. But Jesus was speaking of deeper things. Deeper things that causes transformation in one's life. So that he can have a relationship with the Lord. It's not about reading the Bible only. It's not about coming to church only. It's not about being dipped into the uh, baptismal pool only. But it is about that transformation. What is it that you used to do that you no longer do? You need to make sure that my life has transformed since the day I received Jesus Christ. So you need to hear and understand. Open your ears to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When you hear, it leads you to number two, which is conviction. When the word of God is spoken to a person, it brings in conviction. And without conviction, there's no repentance. Without conviction, there's no transformation. Without conviction, nothing will happen in a person's life. This is why the Bible says, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It is because when the word of God comes into your life, it brings in conviction. And if the word of God is not convicting you, then we are wasting our time here. The word of God has to convict you to leave the things that you used to do. To leave your sins. To forgo your sins. To forgo your old life. And pursue a new life. The things that I used to do, I do them no more. So when the word of God comes into your life, it brings conviction. Conviction of sin. Conviction unto repentance. Conviction to follow him. Conviction to bring in movement. Conviction to change your situation. Conviction to desire to know more. This is why Nicodemus had to visit Jesus by night because he had yet something and he was convicted by the little that he had. 
and he decided to visit Jesus and said, I want to understand these things. I need to understand these things. Praise the name of the Lord. He desired more. And when he was told that you cannot end if you are not born again, he said, how can this be? How can these things be? How can it happen? Then Jesus said to him, there is no man who has visited heaven except the son of man who came from heaven. And he is here to declare the heavens to you. Then he went on to say, as Moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness, so the son of God must be lifted. And whosoever believeth, so when you are convicted, what is the next thing? You need to believe. Praise the name of the Lord. Alleluia. You need to believe the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because conviction on its own is not enough. Mm -hmm. But you need to believe. Alleluia. The reason why Nicodemus had to visit Jesus by night is because he was still doubting in a way. So when he visited, he said, yes, I am partially convict co co convicted. I am partially convicted. Now, I want to no more so that I can believe. Hallelujah. The reason why we come to church every day, we want to know more so that we can believe fully. Uh, uh. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, Jesus said to him, the Son of God must be lifted and whosoever believeth in him will not perish. So the bottom line here is to believe. Whenever the word of God is being spoken to you, you need to believe what the word of God says. You need to believe what the Spirit is saying. You need to believe. Then he said, those who believe in him will not be condemned. But those who do not believe, they are condemned already. For they could not believe in the Son of God. If you want to be condemned, refuse or reject the word of God. Some people, they do come to church, but they do not believe the word. Some people, they do, do, do other, uh, attend services, but they do not believe. So the Bible says, if you do not believe, then you are already condemned. So it might be a waste of time going and visiting the church or praying with others if you do not believe. What you need is to believe the word. We can declare and prophesy but as long as there is no one who is believing what the spirit is saying it is a waste of time. It is my desire and my prayer that we may have a church that believes the word of God. It is my prayer and my belief that when we get the church that believes in the word of God, things want to change, not only in their lives, but in the church, things want to change. There's going to be a shift of things because we believe. There are things that we wish some people could help us on. What do they need? They only need us to believe. If you believe. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew 8, verse 26. I want you to understand that faith. Faith is a gift from God. Now when God gives you a gift, He expects you to use it, to develop it, to nurture it, to grow it. It is the Lord's expectation. Matthew 8, 26, what does it say? Anyone? Matthew 
Jesus was in the boat with his disciples and they were crossing over to the other side. Then there arose a tempest, a cyclone, and Jesus was sleeping. And they were crying and they were so afraid. Then they had to wake up Jesus. And when Jesus woke up, the Bible says, as he woke up, he said to them, Ye of little faith, why are you fearful? Which means when you have little faith, you are always afraid of things that happen around you. When you have got little faith, you are always afraid of your surroundings. You are always afraid of witchcraft. You are always afraid of those who uh, walk in the night. Because you have got little faith. I always say, I always say, fear means the absence of faith. When you are living in fear, it is showing us that you don't have faith. When you are living in fear, it is pointing to what is happening internally because these two things cannot live in the same house together. Fear and faith. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, if you have faith, if you have faith, you are not afraid of anything. You can speak to situations. You can speak to trees and mountains. Thou art be removed and be thrown into the sea and they will obey you. If you have faith. So, we have got believers, we have got little faith. They know the operations of the devil more than they know the scriptures. They know how Satan is turn into cockroaches. They know how Satan is can enter your house as mosquitoes. Why? Simply because they live in fear and they try to find out all about these negative things. Yet they have to live in faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Do I have a witness in the house? Some have got growing faith. Luke 17 verse 6. There are some people who have got faith that is growing. It's not static. Because if it is static, it's actually dying. But if you have got faith that is growing, that's a good sign that something something is happening in your life. Luke 17 verse 6. Do I have someone to read for me? Verse 6. Yes. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plugged up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. If you have got seed as a mustard seed, what is a mustard seed? It's a tried and tested seed. And a seed has got potential. If it is planted, then it grows. When it is nurtured, it grows. When it is nurtured, it produces fruit. Which means if you have got faith, that is growing. If you have got faith, that needs to be nurtured. You can speak even to the mountains. Your faith has to be something that is growing. Nature your faith. Feed your faith. Put manure on your faith. And the food of faith is the word. If you feed your faith on the word of God, it grows. It is my prayer and my desire that each and every individual
spiritual here must have a growing faith. You must have growing faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody who can say when they face challenges or temptations, then they can say, therefore, I know your tricks. I know your tricks. You cannot get me this time around. I am going to stand my ground and say no to your advances. Temptations are always there. But we need somebody who has got growing faith who can say no to the advances of the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. And there are some people who have got great faith. Praise the name of the Lord. Matthew 15, 26 to 28. Matthew 15, 26 to 28. I, I, I love this group. We have got a, a great, great, great faith. I love this group. Matthew 15, 26 to 28. Yes, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. And he said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered, answered and said unto him, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. Praise the name of the Lord. And her daughter was made whole from the very hour. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible speaks here about a Canaanite woman. A Canaanite woman.